Gene Kelly, the star of Singing in the Rain, was a hero to his fans, but behind the public mask dwelt an insecure and bad-tempered man who loved younger women. With such classic movies as Singing in the Rain, Anchors Away, On the Town and An American in Paris, Gene Kelly came to symbolize American post-war optimism. In a t-shirt and khakis, he brought a muscular athleticism to dance, worlds apart from the top hat, white tie, and tails elegance of Fred Astaire. Yet behind Kelly's gymnastic exuberance hid a ferociously competitive egotist with a savage temper, a secret dark side, and a penchant for younger women reveals the biography, He's Got Rhythm. He could not abide losing and never hesitated to show his temper when he did, say co-authors sisters Cynthia and Sarah Brideson, who interviewed Kelly's family and friends and unearthed previously unpublished sources. Lana Turner was another victim. In a stage fight, she told Kelly to throw her down harder. He later confessed, like a fool, I broke her elbow. While filming Anchors Away, Kelly played nasty tricks on Frank Sinatra because the crooner was, according to him, always a pain in the neck. He also repeatedly tripped up co-star Catherine Grayson, who began strangling Kelly with his tie until he screamed for her to stop. At just under 5 foot 9 inches, Kelly often felt dwarfed by his co-stars in high heels and made them slouch beside him. Esther Williams complained that she was suffering scoliosis from having to make herself short opposite Kelly. He lashed back, that son of a bitch even sits tall. At home, Kelly loved hosting celebrity games of charades and volleyball, but famed choreographer Bob Fosse recalled, I'd never seen anyone so fierce about a so-called friendly game in my life. He had a competitive streak in him that was quite frightening. This trait drove the composer Andre Previn to stop visiting Kelly's home, complaining he always had this desperate need to be the best. After losing one volleyball game, Kelly slammed his foot down so hard in disgust that he broke his ankle, forcing him to abandon the lead role in Easter Parade to Fred Astaire. On the Swiss ski slopes of Zermatt, trying to outpace Olympic skiers, Kelly tore cartilage in his knee in 1958, which he claimed was the end of serious dancing for me. Yet Kelly saved his harshest criticism for himself. He was horrified when he saw himself on screen for the first time. Shocked is a better word. The sight of my funny Irish kisser magnified that many times sent me out of the theatre with the screaming memes. I had an awful feeling I was a tremendous flop. Tormented by insecurity, he never felt like a good actor. I would have loved to have been as good an actor as Spencer Tracy or Marlon Brando, said Kelly. I was a very good stage actor, but in films I never was quite as good, just passable. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Preparing for the Three Musketeers in 1948, Kelly confessed, My main fault is I still act as if I were on the stage. I'm still too broad in gestures and facial expressions. Same with the voice. I hit the back row in a close-up. Keep forgetting there's a microphone that catches every whisper. Born Eugene Curran Kelly in 1912, Growing up part of a childhood vaudeville song and dance act, Kelly ran dance schools in Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania and became a Broadway dancer before being lured by Hollywood. But his movie career was almost dead on arrival. Seeing Kelly's first screen test, MGM boss Louis B. Mayer declared him too short, too sexy, not sympathetic, not for us. MGM studio manager Eddie Mannix agreed, I don't see any motion picture potential in Kelly. He's the wrong kind of Irishman. Kelly's insecurities drew him to much younger women. I find myself wondering over and over why that 28-year-old man wanted the child I was at 16, said chorus girl Betsy Blair, who went on to become Kelly's first wife. 
Romancing the teenager, Kelly shared her hotel bed, but refused to make love to her, sending her to sleep each night with a chaste kiss. I didn't understand and wondered what the hell was wrong with him, lamented Betsy. They married when Betsy was 17 and Kelly 29, and she was soon pregnant with their daughter Kerry. Betsy gave up her acting career to be a devoted wife and mother, but after he served in the US Navy during the Second World War, Kelly sent their daughter to live with Betsy's parents, visiting her only once a week. He later confessed it was selfish, unfatherly neglect. Betsy and I just wanted to have a good time. A child would have been in the way. Betsy revived her acting career and was Oscar nominated for 1955 drama Marty. But saddened that Kelly still viewed her as a child, she moved to Europe to pursue her career. I was not strong enough to confront him and make him see me as a woman, not as a little angel, she said. He was old-fashioned and paternalistic. Betsy began a string of affairs and asked for a divorce, but Kelly begged her to stay. I've known about your affairs, Kelly told her. I thought since you never had a true adolescence it would pass. I'll wait it out. But they divorced in 1957 and Kelly fell in love with his longtime dance assistant, Jean Coyne, 10 years his junior, tying the knot in 1960. He had loathed being single. Freedom is lonely, he said. It's sheer boredom. Jean gave Kelly two more children before dying of leukemia in 1973. His iconic 1952 hit, Singing in the Rain, presented some unique problems as well. Kelly endured a 103 degree fever while filming the rain soaked dance and his tweed suit shrunk tightly and his trousers grew shorter as filming progressed. In another scene, co-star Debbie Reynolds was chewing gum when the cameras rolled and quickly hid the gum on a ladder where Kelly leaned his head as he danced. When he straightened up, he left a nice clump of hair behind, recalled Reynolds. That was nearly the end of me. In 1990, aged 77, Kelly wed Patricia Ward, aged 31, whom he had hired five years earlier to help write his memoirs. His children did not attend the wedding. Their marriage was sadly brief. In 1994, Kelly suffered a serious stroke, and the following year, a second stroke left half his body paralyzed. A third stroke ended his suffering in 1996. Yet, even near the end of his legendary career, Kelly remained self-critical, saying, I don't watch my films too much because when I do, I do a lot of wincing. Generations of Kelly's fans beg to differ. Gene Kelly died on February 2nd, 1996 in Beverly Hills, California. He will always be remembered for his incredible contribution to the movie musical through dance performance, choreography, and photography. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Gene Kelly movie that you like the most, or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.